our dear viewers and listeners. We greet you all in the precious and wonderful name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. This is the day the Lord has made. And we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Welcome to today's Bible study. Please invite somebody to join you. As we get into this wonderful word of God. That I believe will change your life forever. So, before we begin today's session, let's get into a moment of prayer. Let's pray. Lord, yes, Lord. there is no one like you. There will never be anyone like you. Yes, Have your way in us, King of Glory. Yes, Manifest your love, mm. your grace. Mm. Thank you for the spirit of revelation yes, as you open our eyes mm. to show us the work that was done for us at Calvary. Yes, Lord. Spirit of the living God, mm. may you amplify this word. Mm. Let it go forth in power, mm. in simplicity and clarity. Mm. And let everyone that hears this word mm. come alive. Let them fulfill their purpose mm. to bring glory mm. to our King of kings and Lord of lords. Yes, in Lord. Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. We take today's text from the book of Romans chapter 5. We'll be still reading from verse 12 and go all the way to verse 17. Yes, I'm aware last week we did cover verse 12 and it used verse 13 and 14 to explain verse 12. Now, in the same way today, we will be using the last part of verse 14 and it will be verse 15, 16, and 17 that Paul uses to explain the last part of verse 14. Paul za kozesa okutuyamba okunnyonnyola kitunde kisemba yecho nnyirwa 10 nya. Let's get into the word of God. Katusome kigambo cha katonda. This is what it says. Chogera bwe kiti. Therefore Era, just as through one man nga omu, sin entered the world e monsi, and death through sin no kufa, mchibi, and thus sin and thus death spread to all men because all sinned for until the law sin was in the world but sin is not imputed where there is no law nevertheless death reigned from Adam to Moses even over those who had not sinned according to the likeness of the transgression of Adam who is the type of him who was to come but the free gift is not like the offense for if by the one man's offense many died kubango olwokunona kuomu abafa banji much more the grace of god na yokusinga nyo echi sacha akatonda and the gift by the grace of the one man jesus christ ne chidabo olwechi sacha omuntu omu yesu christo abounded to many chasukirira okubuna abanji and the gift is not like that which came through the one who sinned. For the judgment which came from one offense resulted in condemnation. But the free gift which came from many offenses resulted in justification. For if by one's offense death reigned through the one 
much more those who receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness will reign in life through the one Jesus Christ. Praise be to God. What do we have here? Here we have a package still dealing on the subject of justification. But in this case, Paul poses the school of the line of thought to deal with some immediate issues. If you notice verse 12 in your Bible, Bible ends with because all sinned. And there is a dash. I must Explain that this dash was not in the original Greek. But it was put there for the ease of we the English people. To help us understand that at this point, Paul is drawing the line of thought to something else. The first line begins with therefore just as. Now in grammar for those of you who are paying attention in school when, when they say therefore just as you always Within that statement, you had to find a statement saying, even so. So that is what joins this to that. But what we see here is a break off in, in the line of thought. Because here he was talking about sin entering into the world through one man and death through sin. Then he now brings the line of thought on how all men sinned. So then verse 13 and verse 14 are dedicated to explain how sin and death came to reign through mankind. So that is what we saw in the last study. We then now draw your attention to verse 14. Why he says, nevertheless, death reigned from Adam to Moses. Even over those who had not sinned. According to the likeness and transgression of Adam. Who is a type of him who was to come. Now he introduces two persons here. The Adam who sinned. And through him sin and death came into the world. And then another type of like Adam, who was to come. And it is these two personalities. One is Adam, Adam, and the other is Jesus Christ, who are now compared in parallel. So, last week we saw that God views humanity through these two persons. Adam, Adam through whom all humanity 
comes into existence mm. by birth. And by birth, I'm talking about the physical birth. Which is we call conception. And then we do have Era Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ, through whom those who believe in him and his finished work on our behalf become born again receive a new birth so you have two groups of people one from Adam and the second group from Jesus Christ. Now, having understood that, the text tells us in verse 15, but the free gift is not like the offense or the transgression. For if by one man's offense many died, much more grace, much more the grace of God. And the gift by the grace of the one man, Jesus Christ, Yesu Christo, abounded to many. Let's first explain the word offense. Some versions use the word transgression. But this is the Greek word. Paramptoma. Paramptoma is an interesting one. Because it means to deviate. It means to sleep. It means to fall. It means to transgress. It means to trespass. It is from this word that we have the expression of man's fall. Basically, man was headed in a particular direction. Aligned to God's purpose. And because of his disobedience, he diverted he deviated from that purpose. So basically, that is what we call transgress. And here, Paul having explained to us the parallel of Jesus and Adam. Before you think that they are comparable. Yes, through him men are born. Their actions impact the people under them. So in the same way the actions of Adam impact all those that are born under him. The same way the actions of Jesus impact all those that are born again. One, you are born of the flesh. Here, you are born of the spirit. And it is here that the comparisons end. Paul then begins to tell us that the gift that Jesus brings to the table is not like. So he begins to draw the contrast. And there are various words that come through the three verses that we see. The first key word that I want us to take note of, it is the word not like. And we see this in verse 15. And we see this also in verse 16. In verse 15, it says the gift is not like. And he will 
will emphasize this again in verse 16. The other word that we will encounter is the word abound, which speaks of a surplus. So, this will also come with another word called abundance. Or the word much more. So as he is drawing the comparisons and the contrast, he is going to show you that this does not in any way compare with the other. So, what are the comparisons? For starters, he compares that Adam and Jesus Christ are parallels. Adam acted on behalf of humanity. Adam And so, Jesus also, in the same way, acted on behalf of humanity. So Adam became a type or a model of everyone including Jesus Christ who was to come. So that is the reason why Jesus Christ had to be born. He had to put on flesh. He had to come in the likeness of humanity. Because this of what needed to happen. Justification would not have been possible if he had not come in the likeness of human flesh. But lest you think that Adam and Jesus are on the same footing. He now begins to draw for us what they are not like. And here he begins by telling us that the free gift is not like the trans is not like the transgression. So even though they both represent large groups of people. Even though what they did affected their respective groups. In a certain sense they are alike. But in another sense they are not alike. Because in the middle of verse 15 and in the middle of verse 17 he uses the Word much more. What does he want to, us to understand? That Jesus Christ, yes no Christ is much more than Adam. Ah, seeing wala Adam. Jesus Christ, yes, Christ has accomplished much more than Adam has. And what is the implication of that? The implication is that those that have believed on the Lord Jesus Christ all gain much more than what they lost in Adam. Let me repeat that. What this means is that we gain much more from our faith in Jesus Christ than what we lost in Adam. Why? Because Jesus accomplished for us much more than what Adam did make us lose. So we gain much more through Jesus Christ than what we lost through Adam. I liken Adam to a sheep that drowned, that goes down to the bottom of the sea. And then Jesus Christ does much more than just bring up that sheep 
relationship to the surface where it was before. No, he brings hey, up hey. that ship. Restores it. And ensures it gets to its destination. So, so he provides much more than what you lost because the ship went under. So the point is that Adam by his own disobedience may have brought about all the adverse effects that we see in our world today. But here is the good news. Jesus Christ by his obedience to the will of God which will included death on the cross that he may be resurrected and why did all this have to happen? So that we identify with him in his life. Death, burial, and resurrection. So then now we reign in him in life. And we shall see more of that in verse 17 and verse all the way verse to verse 21. As we contrast the two. So you see, Jesus Christ, yes, Christ, may I say, has elevated those that believe in him from where they fell to where they should be. Now, now I need to point out two lines of thought that are very important. One is what we call historicity of Adam. And why is this important? Because Adam, Adam was a human being that did live according to scripture. Adam is not a fable that was invented by man. Adam is an individual that actually lived on this earth. And the consequence of his actions is bearing the effects that we have today. And every one of us has got to understand it from that perspective. Because if we do not, then everything collapses. And this is important. That is where the school of thought of evolution does not, uh, should not even have a line of thought in what we are dealing with. Because if Adam came from a monkey, Adam or a chimpanzee or a baboon and evolved into man. Uh, forget the other more scientific name, the Zinjathropas and all that. Forget those names that we pick from zoology. And the school of thought I want you to understand is that in order for this to have meaning, you need to understand that Adam was a historical being who was created by God. And it is through Adam and his wife Eve that all humanity were born. Genesis chapter 5 verse 1 tells us that Adam Adam produced one in his image. 
yazalo omuntu mungeri yi so the image is talking about is the fallen image or the fallen nature echifana nyecho chicho omuntu yayunona not the one after the image of god as in genesis chapter 1 26 to 27 siyo ri azali ba mungeri ne chifana cha katonda mwebelebele sule soka abiri mukaga ne musanvu and we need to take note of that so what that means is that everyone then that came out of Adam Adam inherited that fallen nature which we call the nature of sin but the good news is this the scriptures tell us and they use the word abundance so what Jesus did did so much more abound the Greek word there is the word perisia. Now this is a word that talks about superabundance. It talks about excess. It talks about surplus. What that means is that what Christ has provided or the grace that we receive through faith in Jesus Christ exceeds the guilt that we incurred through Adam's fall. And we will let us see that where sin did abound, grace did abound much more. And this is the good news for us. And for many people use this scripture to say, but you see, that is the license to sin. No, the abundance of grace is not the license to sin. No, grace teaches us to say no to sin. To overcome sin. Why? Because Christ has purchased this for us. And this is the gift that we see. That the Bible paints for us today. Let's get back to the text. Like we began and said in verse 12, Paul moves the emphasis or the focus first of all to the fallen nature of sin and at the end of verse 14, he now brings the comparison of Adam and Jesus Christ. Now, after bringing that comparison, he then now paints the contrasts for us. And he draws three contrasts. The first contrast that we have is the contrast of death and grace. And that is what we see in verse 15. Look at what the Bible tells us. It says in that scripture that but the free gift is not like the offense or the transgression. For if by one man's offense many died, much more the grace of God and the gift by the grace of the one man Jesus Christ abounded to many. What is it that we see here? 
We see that the gift is not like the offense. Yes, it cancels out the offense. It cancels out the transgression. But it is not like it. The two are not comparable. Yes, by one man's of offense or transgression, many died. Yes, by one man's gift of grace, grace did abound to many. Yes, we know that many were impacted. But the grace that is extended is much more than the transgression that was committed. And that's what Paul wants us to understand in today's text. So what is he trying to say? That death did come. But, and that is what is important to capture our attention. There is a free gift. And this gift is what nullifies. It is what overcomes. It is what does away with what came through sin, which is death. So, he's saying to us that the free gift is not like the transgression. So, if by one man's transgression, and that transgression is the day the Lord told Adam, but the day you eat of this fruit, you shall surely die. Now, this is not a figure of speech. It is 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 a figure of speech. So the death process did kick in. One who was destined to live eternally. They began to age. So all the challenges that we see. All the death. All the sadness. All the sorrow. All the sicknesses and disease. Came in as a result of this death sentence on mankind. And it is not just the physical, but man is cut off spiritually and is then a candidate of the second death which is the eternal death. And that is, should be very conscious in the life of of anyone who has not put their faith in Jesus Christ. But look at how he expounds on this. In the same verse, he says much more. Did the grace of God. And the grace of God, he's talking about salvation. In its entirety, he's talking about our justification. He's talking about our reconciliation. He's talking about our redemption. All this is in the same package. So the gift by the grace of one man, and this man is Jesus Christ, and he emphasizes the one man, pointing to his humanity, pointing to him as being a type, like Adam, but the gift different. 
what he did different from what Adam did. And here he says what he did abounded to men. So the same way when you believe now in Jesus Christ something marvelous happens. In that moment, because of your faith in Christ and his finished work, God declares you righteous. And that is very important. And a lot of people confuse these two. Two words. Does he declare you? Does he make you? And let me explain. What he does is declare you righteous. Because of your faith in Christ's finished work. The making is the act of sanctification. And now that is what we will talk in detail from chapter 6. Going forward. But having understood that, I want to emphasize the point that we gain more in Jesus Christ than what we lost in Adam. That is the first contrast. Now, what is the second contrast? The second contrast is what we see in verse 16. Look at what the text says. It says, and the gift is not like that which came through the one who sinned. For the judgment which came from one offense resulted in condemnation. But the free gift which came from many offenses resulted in justification. So here is the second contrast. Adam, Adam brought condemnation through his sin, through his transgression. Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ, on the other hand, through his free gift, did bring to us justification. Now, justification is not comparable to condemnation. So, looking at it, these two are not comparable. So, through sin, death came into the world. And why? Because the Bible tells us that the wages of sin is death. And so everyone was condemned to death. Everyone born of Adam. Everyone born into this world. Then inherits that nature. And because of that nature. They are condemned. So you're not condemned because of what you do. You are condemned because of the nature you have. It is the nature of sin. But the gift, how it is better than what Adam did, do for us. In that whereas Adam's act did bring about to us condemnation. This gift through Jesus Christ brings to us justification. It raises what Adam did. 
Which brings us to the third contrast. The third contrast is what we see in verse 17. The Bible says, For if by one man's offense, death reigned through one, much more, mark the words, much more, those who receive, the abundance of oh, grace and of the gift of righteousness will reign in life through one Jesus Christ. Yes, o Christo. What is he trying to say? He's now contrasting again the transgression by one and because of the transgression by one death reigned by one so the act of transgression brought or may I use voted or got death to reign or may I say coronated or crowned death as king. So it brought death to have dominion. And death is a cruel monarch. So, so because death then brings about the sadness. It is death that brings about all the sickness. So what sin brought was death and so death just wrecked havoc. Not only then, still today, Everything that has gone wrong with us, everything that is going on wrong around us, is because sin has one agenda to cause death to reign. Physical death, spiritual death, and eternal death. So death is not your friend. Sin is not your friend. To anyone that believes in Jesus Christ, sin is not your friend. Because sin brings death. Sin brings condemnation. But right there in the middle, he says much more. Those who receive the abundance of grace. So they are those who receive. So this abundance of grace doesn't go to everyone. It only goes to a particular people who receive. Not those who reject it. So those who receive, and this represents salvation in its entirety. Your propitiation, your reconciliation, your justification, your redemption, your union with Christ, your communion with Christ, and your adoption in God through Jesus Christ. Look at this wonderful package. And Paul uses one word, gift. He says it is a gift. You don't earn it. You don't work for it. There is nothing that you can do that makes you qualify for it. It is only your empty heart of faith that receives Jesus Christ and his finished work. And when you do that, the gift is yours. And the package is yours. And this gift 
of righteousness will cause you to reign in life through Jesus Christ. Look at what is happening. The third contrast that we have here. You have the reign of death. And then you have the reign of life. And here I introduce something very important. Which is a theological truth. And this theological truth is the fact that they are jurisdictions. And each jurisdiction is separate and different from the other. On one side is the reign of death. On the other side is the reign of life. Now this reign of death is comes through Adam. So everyone that is born and comes into this world comes under the reign of death. When you surrender your life to Jesus Christ, you receive him as your Lord and Savior, you become born again. Then what happens, you move from this kingdom where death reigns to the kingdom where life reigns. Now you cannot compare the two. So you can't, when you are here, it is death that is reigning. If you are in Christ, it is life that reigns. And all this comes as a result of what we call imputation. This is just credited to you. And it is credited to you. It is imputed to you. This very date and time that you believe on Jesus Christ. So this is what happens. The foreign you when you place your faith in Jesus Christ, you are justified. Having been justified, then the righteousness of God is imputed to you. That having happened, the sanctifying work of, of God happens in you through all eternity. Impacting your body, your spirit, and your soul. That is the good news. So Adam, Adam is like Jesus Christ. But is unlike Jesus Christ. In one sense there is a likeness. Yes, yes. Humanity is born through them. Yes, their actions impact humanity. But what Jesus has done far exceeds what Adam ever did. So if you are there watching us, you have a choice to make. There are three contrasts we have given you. The contrast of death versus grace. We looked at the contrast of condemnation. Versing justification. In verse 16. And then we looked at the contrast of reigning the reign of death versus the reign of life. So you have a choice to make. But for you who would like to move from the reign of death to the reign of life, from death to grace, from condemnation to justification. Here is the good news. Right now, that can happen to you. Why don't you say this prayer after me? Say, dear God of glory, 
I am Katondo Wechitibwa. You have this wonderful plan for humanity. That those of us, that all of us, who have been born in the likeness of Adam, born under the reign of death, born under the reign of sin, sentenced to be condemned for all eternity, sentenced to death, can now, through faith in Jesus Christ, receive by grace the life that you give and can be justified and reign in life both now and to all eternity. Here I am, I need this grace. I need this justification. How the Lord claims me. I believe that Jesus is the same of the Lord. And I bless my un wavering faith in him and his finished work on my behalf. Jesus, you are my Lord and my Savior. And today, I surrender everything to you. Take charge of my life, both now and forevermore. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. Amen. Amen. If you say that prayer from the bottom, you have been saved. You have moved from the reign of death to the reign of life through Jesus Christ. Now, there is a number on the screen. I'm requesting that you call that number. Someone will pick it up. Give you the first instruction on this wonderful journey of the new birth of the new view of reigning in life through one man Jesus Christ for you who is born again you have been transported you were moved from the reign of death you have been translated you are now under the reign of life. Take that. Walk that. And God reaches bless you. From Dominion Church. It's been a blessing to have you today. So till we meet next week. Let's say shalom. God reaches bless you.